Hey, good morning, Liberty Church, and it is the Eve morning of Christmas, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing all of you this evening. I want to invite you out at 4 o'clock, 4 p.m. for our Christmas Eve service. We're going to have a phenomenal time, as we do every year, worshiping God and uh, entering in to this Christmas season together. That's tonight at 4 p.m. Uh, your family, your friends, neighbors, all are welcome. Come and join us tonight. We look forward to seeing you. This morning... We're going to look at the book of John chapter 15, and we're going to look together at verse 15. Now, we're in this series called God With Us, and uh, the first week we talked about God with us as Savior. Last week, Pastor Bill, he spoke with us as God with us as helper, and this morning I want to talk about God with us as friend. This is a profound piece of scripture that shapes our identity and as a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, it helps us to understand who we are uh, or how we're seen by God himself. And since we are here on this morning of the eve of Christmas, this scripture is a beautiful reminder to all of us this morning of God's love and the great gift that he gave to us and the reason why we celebrate Christmas so much and why we look forward to celebrating it each and every year and while technically we celebrate it every day of the year jesus christ the son of god born of the virgin mary he's the greatest gift ever given to you and i ever nothing compares to it there's no amount of money there's no gift that anyone could ever give us that could exceed the gift that god gave us in his son the lord jesus christ and in that gift he brings to us an opportunity, and that opportunity is for us to experience a new birth. We call that salvation or being born again. It's where we repent and we have the opportunity to repent from living life our own way, understanding that we're stuck in our sin, and we're able, through Jesus Christ, to turn to God and to receive his forgiveness through the gift of Jesus and the work that he did for us on the cross. Now, in our text verse this morning, Jesus himself is going to be speaking to us. So as we look at this scripture, just understand it's Jesus talking to us. Some people, they, they struggle with this topic because uh, we reverence God and we understand that God is God. He is the creator of all things. And so when we begin talking about God as friends, some people struggle with that. It gets a little too personal. It, some people see it as we're bringing God down a little, but, but that's not what's taking place. And I want you to understand that it's not us bringing God down because Jesus is the one speaking these words. It's rather God lifting us up to a place where we can walk in relationship uh, with him. It's a powerful portion of scripture. So since Jesus is God, uh, and many people view their relationship with God from a God-servant relationship or a father-child relationship, and technically all of that's true, we are his children, and he is our father, and we are his servants, and he is our master. So technically, all of that is true, and we, we need to understand that. But though we often view him in those ways, we need to ask ourselves exactly how does God view us? Uh, when God looks at us as his children, uh, how does God think about us on a daily basis? And when we begin to understand that, it shapes how we understand our relationship with God and it shapes our identity and it, it bolsters our confidence to be able to live out what God has called and asked us to do uh, with, with no doubt uh, because we understand who we are in Christ. In our text this morning, Jesus is going to reveal to us that our relationship with him goes beyond that of master-servant or father-child. As we're about to read, Jesus is going to personally invite us into a more intimate space with him. Praise God. Uh, and that space is called friendship. So if you have your Bibles there in your home this morning, and I hope you do, please pull it out and open up to the book of John chapter 15. We're going to read verse 15 together. You can also follow along on the screen on your television set or your computer screen, however you're watching this morning. And here we go. 
No longer do I call you servants. Did you hear that? No longer do I call you servants. Now, doesn't mean we're not his servants. Jesus is simply saying here, no longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends. Did you get that? Jesus said, I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. And so throughout the course of Jesus's life and ministry, and of course today we have this book right here, uh, the Bible that reveals to us from Genesis to Revelation, uh, even preceding the birth of Jesus Christ himself, uh, God through his Holy Spirit uh, used men inspired by God himself, and he wrote this beautiful book called the Bible. There's nothing else like it on the face of the planet. This too is a gift from God to us Jesus said, for all that I have from my Father, I have made known to you. And that's, being made, that's made known to us through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, through the Word of God. Proverbs 18.24, back in the Old Testament, also highlights this idea of friendship with God. Let's read. It says, a man of many companions may come to a ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer to a brother, and that reference there is in reference to God himself. God is closer to us than a brother. He is a friend. So even in the Old Testament, we were considered, those who knew God, to be a friend of God himself. And in the New Testament, Jesus himself, Jesus who is fully human, but Jesus who is fully God, he wants to make sure that we understand that he does not just see us as a servant, but he calls us friend. I don't know about you, but that's a powerful moment for me when I come to understand that part of my relationship with God, that he sees me as a friend that takes my relationship to a whole nother place than just simply understanding that I am his servant, he is my master, I am his child, he is my father, but he doesn't leave us there. He brings us up to that place that we call friend, and that's a powerful thing when we begin to understand that. Friendship is indispensable to our human experience. It's vital, it's a vital piece of our life. We all need friends just in general. We're talking about in humanity. We all need friends. It's a part of our emotional well-being. It's a part of our social fulfillment in life. Friends bring to us a lot of things. They bring to us support. They bring to us understanding. They bring to us companionship. They provide for us a network for navigating all of life's challenges. And, and let's face it, there are a lot of challenges in life. And I'm so grateful for those physical, earthly, human friends that God has given to me in my life that help me navigate, who listen to me and I listen to them, who pray with me and I pray with them. Those type of friends are very important. Friendship offers to us a profound sense of belonging and connection in the world we live in. The fact that Jesus himself now remember, Jesus at that moment was in his earthly stature. The fact that Jesus calls us friends, that's good news for everyone. That's good news for every people, everyone who was ever born. The fact if we can understand that he calls us friend is very important. And let me pause for just a moment. That's really important today. Christmas, this time of year. Studies show, many studies show actually, that this time of year really brings out the loneliness feeling in the heart of many people, even those who have many friends. <laughs> this time of year, as we begin to reflect back on our life, maybe we see our current circumstances or maybe we're just looking back. Like myself, I just lost my mom uh, in September. Many of you have lost a parent uh, or a loved one or a child at some point in your life. And as we reflect back, upon our lives, which for some reason Christmas seems to take us backwards. We reflect back. We have very, very fond memories. Maybe we have some bad memories. Either way, at this time of year, we become very reflective. And it can bring out that loneliness deep down in the heart of a person. A lot of people experience that. But the good news this morning 
is that for those who know Jesus Christ, even today in the midst of that lonely feeling, if you're feeling that, in the midst of your loneliness, if you're there this morning, you have a friend and that friend is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is not just your average human person. Jesus Christ is God. He's the one who created you. There's no one who knows you better than Jesus Christ himself. And he calls you friend. And if you today might be at that place of experiencing loneliness, I just am praying right now that the presence of Christ, the presence of God would flood your home and flood your heart and flood your mind and that you would be overwhelmed with the presence of a friend and that you would not feel alone and that God would help you to navigate those feelings this morning and that you would be lifted up and encouraged as we get ready to celebrate the gift that God gave us through Jesus Christ the very one who called us friend in John 15, 15. That's the good news. That offer of friendship extends to all who believe and call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And many of you listening to this message today, you're listening because you have done that. You're a part of our Liberty family here at Liberty Church. You knew this was going to be streamed this morning and you tuned in. Some of you maybe are here this morning because a friend invited you to listen. Or maybe you just stumbled across it. You need to know this, that Jesus, if you're not currently walking in a relationship with Jesus... He's waiting to extend that friendship to you this morning. He wants to be your friend. He leaves no one out. No one's excluded. Anyone can walk in friendship with God, our creator, through Jesus Christ, his son. So I'm going to take a look. I've got three quick points that I want us to go through here uh, to finish off what I believe God's laid on my heart for you this day before Christmas morning, on the morning of Christmas Eve. Point number one is this. As we think about God being our friend. A relationship with Jesus Christ totally, completely transforms our identity. And it should begin to transform how we think about ourselves. And that's really important. Jesus begins in our, our text in John 15, 15 by saying, I no longer call you servants. <laughs> he doesn't look at us as a servant, though we are his servants. And though we're, we take great pleasure, as we're going to see in a little bit, we take great pleasure in being able and empowered to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. But Jesus says, I no longer call you servants. He says, truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor a messenger greater than the one who sent him. That's John 13, 16. Here, Jesus clearly makes a reference to us as servants. So we are his servants, but in John 15, 15, he says, I'm no longer calling you servant. We were once bound, once we were bound by a limitating mindset of servitude, even as we just cross that threshold into our relationship with God through Jesus. Again, we call that salvation. We call that the new birth. We call that being born again. Uh, at that moment, uh, we begin having a whole new enlightenment. But sometimes in that moment, we limit our mindset by thinking of ourselves as a servant. And again, we are. But Jesus is just saying in John 15, I no longer call you servant. So he has elevated us. He elevated us to that status of friendship, and that's a pretty cool thing. Um, I remember back when Facebook first came out, and, and we would get friend, re friends, friend requests. Now it's kind of just a, a normal thing. We do it. There are many people who friend request us, and we don't even know who they are. But I remember back in the day when, when Facebook was first starting, just how awesome it felt when friends reached out and wanted to connect and wanted you to uh, accept them as a friend. Or maybe you reached out to someone, and they accepted you as a friend. Wow, what, what an awesome feeling that was back in the beginning of Facebook. You remember what that felt like. And here Jesus, he himself has elevated us to that place of friend. As friends of Jesus, our identity is no longer defined by our shortcomings, no longer defined by our mistakes, no longer defined by our sin. Instead, we're embraced by the love of Jesus Christ. We're embraced by the love of a savior who sees us not as a servant, but he sees us as his friend. Some people struggle with this truth. 
Uh, this is what the scripture says, though. He calls us a friend. I, 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 don't, I don't struggle with the fact that he calls me a friend. It actually it, it energizes my spirit. It energizes my mind. And it makes me want to be loyal to him, to think that I'm his friend, that Jesus sees me as his friend and not just a servant. He's not just my master. <laughs> I'm not just this little old lowly child and he's my father. Those things are true, but he sees me as a friend. He elevates me to that space of relationship. There's a whole different dialogue that goes on between friends than between a child and a father or between a servant and his master. And we need to understand that. In the book of Romans chapter one and verse one, in the very first line of Paul's letter to the Romans, Paul makes this statement and it's, it's imperative to the argument of I am a servant, all right? Paul says this in chapter one, verse one. He says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God. Now, this word servant here in Romans chapter one, verse one, is a translation of the Greek word doulos, doulos, which literally means a slave or bond servant. And it's referring to someone, Paul's referring to himself, it refers to someone who set aside on their own all their own rights to serve another. See, Paul understood that he fully had the right to still live life the way he wanted to live it. He could still do whatever he wanted to do. He still held and possessed what God gave him at birth, which was a gift in and of itself, though some people may not see it as a gift, and that is our free will. We have a free will. We have the choice to do our own thing, or we have the choice to serve God and to yield and to give our lives to him. So when Paul is saying that he is a servant, what he's really saying is by choice, I choose to leave my old life behind and I choose to make myself a servant or a bond made to this person, this God, this man called Jesus Christ. And I lay aside my willing choice and I make it my duty to serve the one who saved me and rescued me from my sin. See, Paul understands fully all that Christ Jesus had done for him. And many of us, we do too. Some of us are still catching on to, to literally, that God literally rescued us from the flames of hell, all right? Some of us don't get that. I mean, we were that close to being cast into outer darkness and the flames of hell for all of eternity, but for God who sent his son Jesus into the world and he reached down and he gave us an opportunity to grab his hand and to be pulled out from the flames of eternal hell and eternal damnation, a place not even created for us, a place intended for Satan and all of his demons, all, all, of, his, uh, all of his followers. Um, but it's that place where all who reject the free gift of God will end up, according to the scripture, for all of eternity, though it's not meant for us. God loves us so much, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever, whoever, so important, that's an important word, that whoever would believe in him, that's all you have to do, is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and confess him as savior, that all who believe in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. That's such great news for all of us this morning. See, the appropriate response for all of us this morning who have been touched so powerfully by the love of God, like Paul, is that he calls us his friend and our sincere, at, because of that, it should deepen our sincere desire to be a servant. See, some people struggle because they think, no, I'm a servant. No, he's my master, which is true. No, I'm his child. He's my father, which is true. But the reality is when we grasp what Jesus said to us, he calls us a friend. And when we understand that dynamic of relationship, it makes me want to be a better servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to continue laying myself aside and pursuing him and all that he's called me to with all all of my heart, with all of my soul, and with all of my mind. And nobody modeled that better than Paul himself. We are eternally debted to the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we understand all that he has done for us, and we understand that he no longer calls us his servant, but he calls us a friend, 
all that makes me want to do is serve him more. <laughs> it makes me want to serve him more. Jesus said, no longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. I am a friend of God. You are a friend of God if you have put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to um, go over to the book of Galatians chapter five and verse one for a moment where Jesus says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. And the truth is that our friendship with Jesus is intended to shape our self-perception, uh, what we think about ourselves. And when we understand that Jesus calls us friend, it should empower us to live more freely in the freedom that Christ has offered to us, uh, which comes with being so deeply loved by him. He came, the Bible says in Galatians 5.1, he came to set us free from the law of sin and death so that we would be empowered to follow him with all of our heart, with all of our mind, and with all of our soul. Jesus, before he died on the cross, God's people lived under what was called the law. It was a, a detailed system of laws by which they had to follow. And it served as a moral compass to guide and direct and lead their lives. The law, while powerless to give salvation or produce any freedom at all, nevertheless, it did point the way to Jesus Christ. The law showed those in the Old Testament, showed Israel that they could never do it on their own. They needed a savior. Let's go to Galatians chapter three this morning, and I want us to quickly read verses 19 through 24. Why then the law? It was added because of transgressions or sin until the offspring should come to whom the promise had been made, and it was put in place through the angels by an intermediary. Now an intermediary implies more than one, but God is one. Is the law then contrary to the promises of God? Certainly not. For if a law had been given that could give life, then righteousness would indeed be by the law. But the scripture imprisoned everything under sin so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to all who believe. Verse 23. Now before faith came, we were held captive by the law, imprisoned until the coming of faith would be revealed. So then the law was our guardian until Jesus Christ came in order that we might be justified by faith. See, Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, his sacrificial death, the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ fulfilled the law. He fulfilled for us what we were unable to do on our own. And because of that, when we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, it completely sets us free from the law of sin and death. And because Jesus, he died, and because Jesus was resurrected, God's laws are now written on our heart. They're not written on some tablet somewhere. They're written on our heart, put there by the Holy Spirit. And now we're free to serve Jesus Christ. As friends, we desire to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And his law written on our hearts, directed by the power of the Holy Spirit who lives in us, helps us to be able to navigate all of that to the place where we don't have to wonder what to do. We just kind of know what to do <laughs> as the Holy Spirit in God's word leads, guides, and directs our lives. We are now free. Say free. Free. Say it again. Free. We are now free to follow and serve Jesus Christ in any way that would bring him glory and honor. And not because we have to, but because now as his friends, <laughs> We want to, we want to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Point number two is this, the friendship that, that Jesus has offered to us is intended to bring us intimacy with God. Think about that for a moment. That is a wow factor. The fact that God, creator of all things, desires to have friendship with us, desires to have intimacy with us, wants us to know him, and he already knows us, but he wants relationship. He wants a relationship with us. Jesus goes on to say in our text, I have called you friends for everything that I have learned from the Father I have made known to you. See, that tells me that God has held nothing back from us. Nothing 
has he held back from us. But because of his great love for us, he's offered us all that he has that we might walk in a relationship with him as friend. This statement reveals the depth of intimacy that Jesus Christ himself is offering to us, offering to you. He wants a friendship with you. He wants a relationship with you. He knows you, every detail of your life, and he wants you to get to know him, and he's given us the opportunity to do so. In true friendship, there is an openness. In true friendship, there is a trust, and, and there's a willingness for each other to share their heart and mind. Jesus, he initiated that type of relationship. He initiated that type of love, and he invites us to reciprocate, to come back and to share our whole life with him, and to give him our whole heart and our whole mind and all of our being. And this is more than amazing. As I said, it's mind-blowing. It's, it's a wow factor. It's very powerful when we really begin to grasp just how much God desires to walk in relationship with us. This Christmas, I, I really hope you're not just caught up in all the hype that the world gives for this day that we're about to celebrate tomorrow. For this day, what it does is it shows us God opening the door through his son, Jesus Christ, for you and I to walk in a relationship with him and not just any type of relationship, servant, master, child, father, those are true, but he sees us as a friend and he desires to elevate us to that place where you and I can have that type of of intimacy with him. And that's a powerful thing. It is for me. I hope it is for you on this Christmas Eve. And I want to ask you a question this morning. Are you actively seeking to know more of God's heart? Are you? Are you actively seeking to know more of God's mind? Do you? <laughs> because his heart and his mind, it's all made available to you. You can know the heart and mind of God himself if you would take the time to get into his word and, and to meditate on his word, to read his word, to digest his word. If through prayer you would just simply talk to him and, and in prayer is not just speaking, it's also receiving, listening, Talk to him. Listen, what is God saying to you? And then fellowshipping with other believers. Why should you come out tonight at four o'clock to celebrate Jesus? Because you should come together in fellowship with your brothers and sisters in Christ and celebrate this very important day where God opened the door to a relationship with him and to become a friend. Go beyond being a servant. Go beyond being a child. But walk in a relationship with him and be called his friend. And that's my prayer this morning, that you would understand that on this Christmas, that God would make that a reality for you, that you're more than a servant, you're more than a child, you're a friend of God. And point number three this morning is this, our response must be our love and obedience. Our response to God's offer of friendship must be our love and obedience. I know I have, I have a really good friend, of course, my, well, let me start by saying this. My very, very best earthly friend is my wife, Tina Moen. Um, and uh, I'll start with her. I have another friend, Rich. My children are my friend. When I think of, um, Pastor Mary is my friend. When I think of the people who are close to me, close to my heart, there is no love that I would intentionally withhold from them. There is no obedience. In other words, there is nothing that I would not do for them if I can, if I'm able. Uh, my love and my obedience, my, my, myself, I want to give to each and every one of them because they're my friend and they're dear and they're near to my heart. Friendship with Jesus is not meant to be a one-sided relationship. It's not just what he has done for us or it's not just what he can do for us but it involves reciprocity. It involves an understanding, an awareness of who we are. And out of that love, we serve him. You see, as a child, a child has to obey their father. You see, as a servant, a servant has to obey their master. But as a friend, I do it out of love. I reciprocate the love that I've received from God himself and I feel the power of God's love at work in my life. And do you know what that does? It frees me up. I am free indeed. Christ came to set me free from, this, from, the, from, uh, from, 
from the law and he came to empower me. And now as I experience and understand and become aware that I am a friend of Christ, I'm a friend of God, it makes me want to love him more. It makes me want to obey him more. John 14, 15 says, or Jesus emphasized this. He says, you are my friends if you do what I command you. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Now, you might be thinking, you might get stuck on that word command there uh, for just a moment. You know, well, if he's commanding me to do something, how is that friendship? Listen, Jesus knows us better than anything else. He knows me personally, and he knows all of, all of us generally. And he knows how to help us thrive in this life. And he has given us a set of instructions. These instructions are not meant to save us. Our salvation comes through that relationship with Jesus Christ. Now these instructions are meant to empower us to experience life and life to the fullest. In John chapter 10, verse 10, it says that Satan or the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. The second part of that verse says, Jesus says, I have come that you might have life and life more abundantly. How do we experience that abundant life? By following his directions. So here you might get stuck on that word command, but I don't. <laughs> I see it as Jesus just saying, if I love him, if I really love him, then I'm going to want to live my life according to how he's written it out. For when I do, I will experience the abundant life that he intended me to have. And that's all that verse means. True friendships with Jesus is marked by a genuine desire to align our lives with his will, to align ourselves with the will of God. It's trusting that his commands are rooted in love and wisdom. Anything that he directs me to do is only because he loves me, is only because he's all wise. He holds all wisdom. He knows what's best for me. He knows what's best for you. And as we walk in obedience out of our love for him in reciprocity, all right, then we are able to deepen that friendship, that relationship with him. And listen, friend, we're able to experience the abundant life that Jesus Christ came to give to us. As we celebrate Jesus, God with us this Christmas, it's my prayer that the words of Jesus Christ in John 15, 15, our text scripture today, unveils the remarkable reality, or at least drives it home to you if you already understand that you're his friend. We're not merely his servants. We're not merely his children, but we have a savior who the scripture says we are his friend. And this savior has given us the gift of salvation. He's given us the gift of eternal life. And it just keeps getting sweeter and sweeter and sweeter as the days go by, as we understand that we are friends with God. We don't have to wait to eternity to begin experience that abundant life. We can begin to thrive and flourish in the now as we walk in friendship with God. This truth on this Christmas Eve morning, hopefully will transform everything about your thinking when it comes to your identity, who you are in Christ Jesus. We have been invited into intimacy with God. We have been elevated from that of a child or that of a servant to the place of friendship with God. This Christmas, I want you to really contemplate what it means when we say God with us. He came to offer us something so significant. He came to make a way for you and I to experience God in a way like we could never have dreamed or imagined. He came to make a way for you and I to have the extreme and profound privilege of walking with God as his friend. In Christ Jesus, we're no longer enemies of God. We're no longer slaves to sin, but we are now friends with God himself. And that's pretty cool. Now, I want to close with this story this morning. There may be some of you that are listening today. And again, maybe you were invited by a friend. Maybe you spent the night and you're with family. Maybe you're a relative and you're watching with your family this morning. Or maybe you just happened by 
this stream and you're catching it this morning, listen, uh, I really believe that for some, God was wanting to encourage you today to understand you're not just a child, you're not just a servant, you're a friend. And that's gonna, that's gonna encourage you. That's going to flood your loneliness if you're there this Christmas to understand you're not alone. And we've already prayed that God's presence would overtake that loneliness and surround you with his presence in an overwhelming way. But some of you may be listening today and you do not have yet a relationship with God you're not yet his friend. He wants to be your friend. He wants to have relationship with you, but you're still stuck out of your own free choice, your own free will that God gave you, gifted us all at birth, our own free will and free choice. You're still living life in your own way. I want to share this story with you in closing this morning. True story. In a small town, there was a man named John who walked the path of darkness for many years. His heart was burdened with a weight of guilt. He had done a lot of things that he was not proud of. There was a lot of shame in his life. There were a lot of consequences that he had to face and walk out uh, and, and was living those consequences apart from God. But in the midst of his brokenness, God's grace, God's love, God's desire to be John's friend intervened. John's life had taken a turn that left him feeling lost and hopeless, yet it was precisely in that state of brokenness that God began to work in a very significant way. And maybe you're there today, and maybe you're not facing a lot of shame, and maybe you're not walking in a lot of consequences, but at the same time, you're at that place of brokenness. You're broken on the inside, and you don't even know why. <laughs> you're lonely on the inside, and you know you need something that goes beyond what this earthly life can offer. See, a friend invited John to a local church where he heard the life-changing message of salvation through Jesus Christ. It's a powerful message. The words of John 3.16 echoed in his heart, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have eternal life. As the pastor shared that gospel message, John felt a tug on his heart that he could not ignore. It would not let his thoughts go. He could not shake it. The Holy Spirit was at work to work upon his heart, convicting him of his sin, not to make him feel bad, not to heap shame upon him or guilt upon him, but to turn his attention to the one who could help him do something about that shame and guilt. The Holy Spirit was at work convicting him of sin and drawing him into the loving arms of a heavenly father who desired to have a relationship with him and not as a child and not as a servant, but as a friend. And in that moment, John realized the depth of his need for a savior. Something happened inside of him. He'd never been able to see it before. But as he heard this sermon, as he heard the message, as he heard the words of Jesus Christ, hope began to dangle in front of his eyes. And he began to be awakened to the fact that maybe that loneliness could be taken care of. Maybe that brokenness could be taken care of. In that moment, John realized the depth of his need for a savior. One Sunday morning with tears streaming down his face, John surrendered his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Many of us listening to this service today, we've all done that. We all had that moment in our life where we had to choose to walk away, repent of our old way of living, and we had to choose to turn to God and align ourselves with him. Not anything we can do on our own. But if you're at that place today and like John, you're feeling that, that working in your heart or your mind this morning, just know that God's working hard to draw you to himself because he wants to be your friend. He wants to walk in relationship with you. He wants to help you take care of that brokenness. He wants to help eliminate, erase, and lessen the loneliness in your life. For John, it was the beginning of a journey that would transform his life forever and bring God's grace about in his life in a way that would blow his mind. The true story here serves as a powerful reminder of the boundless, endless grace of God that's available to every single person who ever took a breath in this life. No matter what the depth of our sin, no matter what the depth of our shame. I talked to somebody last night who, uh, who uh, met someone in prison and it corresponds with this person in prison. Um, and uh, this person is now a Christian. 
uh, wasn't a Christian, but in their past life, uh, they, were, uh, they did some pretty horrible things. I'll just leave it there. So horrible that their family ha- no longer has a relationship with them. So horrible that nobody really wants to have a relationship with them, but God does. And this person found a relationship, friendship with God. And even though this person will never get out of physical prison, he's been let out of that inner prison that was holding him captive by his shame and his guilt and his sin. God freed him from all of that. And today he knows he has a freedom in the Lord Jesus Christ. Today, this person who corresponds with him regularly is his earthly friend who continues to remind him of his heavenly father, his eternal friend who made a way for him to be forgiven and cleansed of the most horrible of sins so that he could walk in the fullness of why God really created him in the first place. And though he may be in prison, he's making a difference as a light in that prison. And one day he will escape the physical prison just like he's already escaped that spiritual prison. And he will get to live eternally free with God forever and ever and ever and ever. And that offer goes to all of us. <laughs> and most of, none of you, most probably none of you are in prison today listening to this message. And, and, and maybe you can't relate to that piece. But remember John at that place of brokenness. Just as God reached down to John in his darkest hour, he reaches out to all of us this Christmas. Those of us who know him, those of us who don't. He's reaching out to us to offer us forgiveness, to offer us his love, to offer us his saving grace and to offer us friendship and to help us understand who we are through Christ Jesus. And it gets even better for those of us who surrender our lives to Jesus Christ. Not only does he call us friend, but we get to experience the benefit of that friendship now in this life and in the next forevermore and all of eternity. Listen, I want to take a moment and pray with you today. And maybe you need Jesus as your personal savior this morning. And you've never taken that step to say, God, I want to lay down my free will. I'm tired of trying to do things my own way. I'm tired of of always working so hard and never getting anywhere on the inside of my my emotions, my life, my mental state. None of I've made a lot of money, but Lord, it's not meeting that, that those inner needs. I've 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 done a lot of great things and contributing greatly in this world, but it's not meeting those inner parts of my life. Listen, friend, it's because you're missing something. You're missing friendship with God. And I want to pray with you this morning, and I want to give you an opportunity to invite Christ into your life. I want to pray over all of my Liberty Church family. Uh, At the conclusion, I want to pray over you and ask for God's blessing to just come and bless you in friendship uh, today on this Christmas morning Eve, Christmas Eve, and into tomorrow morning, and may it carry you on forward for the rest of your life. And After this prayer, if you prayed this prayer receiving Christ for the first time, would you please go to our website and there's a place uh, where you can uh, can, uh, scan a QR code or you can fill out uh, the form and if you can't find it, just go to the place that says prayer and uh, and in there where it'll give you an opportunity to say what you want and need prayer for. Just say you received Christ on Christmas Eve morning and, uh, and let us know. Give us your name uh, and give us the details. We would love to reach out to you this, this coming week after Christmas and just congratulate you. Can we pray? Let's close our eyes. Let's bow our hearts and let's pray together. Repeat after me to begin with. Repeat after me. Pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, on this Christmas Eve morning, I choose to lay down my own will, the free choice that you gave me. I choose to lay it down. And Father, this morning, I I cry out to you. I understand my need for you. Lord God, I'm tired of trying to live life on my own. And this morning, I pick up the free gift that you've given or offered to me through your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he took my place on the cross at Calvary and he died shedding his blood as a payment for my sin. And then he was buried and three days later, God the Father raised Jesus Christ from the dead, showing that he had power over death, 
hell and the grave in proving that he truly was the Son of God. On this Christmas Eve morning, I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and I ask forgiveness for all my sins and by faith I receive that new life in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, now I pray over our Liberty Church family and anyone listening today who knows you, I pray a Christmas blessing that God, they would be encouraged in that friendship that you have given to us. If anyone is going through, Lord God, struggling right now, maybe like myself, they've recently lost a loved one, Lord God, or, or maybe they're dealing with some financial pressures and stress, or there could be a number of different things. God, minister to that need today. I pray that you would touch them powerfully, remind them who they are, they're your friend, and Lord, as friends, you take care of us. Lord, take care of them, meet that need for them today. And Lord, fill their hearts, fill their homes with the richest of all of heaven's blessings today as they remember the gift that you gave through Jesus Christ this Christmas. Thank you, Father. We're indebted forever and ever. We love you, we thank you, and we praise you as we worship you this Christmas. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen, amen, and amen. Again, we truly hope that you will come out this afternoon at 4 p.m. right here at our Church Liberty home where we celebrate Christmas Eve together at our candlelight service. It'll be an hour, hour and 15 minutes that will totally, completely uplift your evening and really set you on a course to celebrate Christmas well. God bless you. We'll see you this afternoon. I love you. We're praying for you.